The future energy landscape is being influenced by population growth. By 2030, we may have more than a billion people additionally on the planet. Energy demand, by 2040, we may see energy demand increase by a third. We know that there's urbanization happening. Right now, about 50% of the global population lives in cities. By 2050, that could be up to 70%. Additionally, concerns for climate. Greenhouse gas mitigation and the technologies required to achieve that are going to be key influences in the future energy landscape. We know that all these concerns allow us to think more strategically about the way in which we supply, transmit, and distribute and consume energy. Innovation is achieved by having active markets and demand, by having strong competition, and also by having a strong base of research to achieve innovation. Given that, in the energy sector, we're seeing some key trends which are leveraging those factors. One is that we're seeing a large amount of distributed energy. Right now, there are prosumers in the market, those that consume and produce energy. We're also seeing a diversity in energy supply. We're also seeing a higher demand for energy efficient technologies, both on the supply side and the demand side. Finally, there is a growth in technology which is available to us from the material sciences, the biological sciences, and information sciences, which are really starting to impact the types of innovations we'll have for energy itself. In the recent past, we've seen a few disruptive technologies in the energy sector. In the oil and gas sector, we know that fracking has been very disruptive. It's had a major influence on global energy markets, particularly in the U.S. Solar energy has become disruptive in certain markets, particularly in Germany. We're now seeing more producers of energy in their own homes, certainly impacting the way utilities operate and function. There's a few barriers to energy innovation. One of them is the fact that on the supply side, most energy technologies are very capital intensive and they have a very long lifetime. You see power plants which are built for a billion dollars, they have a 40 year lifetime. That sector doesn't turn over very often. Secondly, energy is a commodity. With energy, we just want it. We want it in a reliable way. We want it in a way that's gonna allow us to use those products which do have that quick turnover life cycle. You know that there's not gonna be a rapid evolution because they have to worry about security, they have to worry about the investment, and they have to worry about making sure that they have a sustainable supply of what they're producing with the technologies which are available and already work today. I'm excited about solar energy and particularly photovoltaics. Photovoltaics, we know, has about a 40 gigawatt annual market. By 2020, that could be 70 gigawatts. It's having some disruptive effects on utilities, and that could be a problem, but it's also an opportunity to reshape industries. I like energy storage. I think that's very important technology, particularly battery energy storage. Lithium ion batteries, they're being used in consumer products, they're being used in vehicles, and they're also starting to be used behind the meter and in front of the meter for grid scale storage and supporting energy of homes. carbon dioxide. We now can utilize CO2 for enhanced oil recovery. We can utilize it in certain industrial sectors. For instance, we can produce urea, we can use it in the food and beverage industry, but how are we gonna convert it to higher value products? That's gonna be very important, both biologically and catalytically. In the long term, I'm particularly excited about autonomous vehicles. We know that today, partially autonomous vehicles are already gaining traction because it's gonna impact the energy sector, the information technology sector, and it's gonna impact consumers more broadly. It's really going to change the way we live.